Are ticks a threat to cruisers and their pets? Perhaps, and in more places than you might think. We've even been bitten in the deserts of Baja, California. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share a nifty and inexpensive device that will remove those nasty little blood suckers, and hopefully keep you a little safer from tick-carried diseases. First, though, today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and a self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a hose, a dishcloth that doesn't get stinky, Yes, please. Visit lunaticgear.com to learn more and use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatic, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. If you've got a dog aboard, you've probably already had to deal with removing a tick. Even with flea and tick repellent, our dog paws would get a few each year. And frankly, Both Dave and I occasionally picked one up when hiking. We learned to always check both paws and ourselves after we'd been anywhere. Now, I always thought of ticks as being in the woods, and it never dawned on me that they could be in the deserts of Baja, California, or in um, basically roads in Bahama, but they were. Now, the first time it ever happened, I pulled out our wilderness first aid book and was pretty appalled at how it told me how to remove the tick. Holding a match to the hind end of a tick buried in dog fur just did not seem remotely like a good idea. The alternate method of rubbing alcohol and tweezers didn't work too well either, and we didn't have any vets or any extra supplies nearby where we were in remote areas. Now, several months later, we made an extended trip back to the U.S. to see family, And while we were visiting Dave's son in tick-prone New England, I saw what was called a tick puller hanging by the cash register at a store we were in, and I grabbed it. I figured it couldn't be worse than what we had been doing. Now, the first time I used it, I was hooked. It removed the whole tick easily. No body parts left behind, nothing crushed, and no pain for little paws. The only problem was sometimes getting it into place through her fur. And yes, while it is marketed for dogs, it works just as well on people. We know this for a fact. A friend recently showed me an improved design. It works better because it's easier to work through the the fur on the dog. It's called a tick twister. I couldn't find one anywhere locally, but they are available on Amazon. They're like $7 or so. I put links to them in the show notes. This is an absolutely wonderful addition to a dog's first aid kit. But even if you don't have a dog, I highly recommend getting something like this for yourself because believe me, you will pick up ticks and Lyme disease is absolutely no joke. Now there's a second type of a tick remover. It's called a tick key. Several readers think that this is even better. And I've put the link for this also into the show notes. Now, the neat thing about that tick key is that it's designed to hang on your key ring or on a ring on a day pack or something, so it's easy to keep it with you all the time. I highly recommend one or the other of these, something I never dreamed of before we headed out cruising, and now I can't imagine being without it. Okay, that's it for this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast. I hope you found it useful and interesting. And please tell your friends about us and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. <music>